Hey everybody, it's Kairos, and in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips to help you take your kindred to the next level. I've pulled this information from a handful of high elo kindred mains and one trick ponies and condensed it all down to fit into this short video. Be sure to use these tips along with the Mobilitics app to stay up to date on Kindred's optimal runes, items, matchups, and other important stats that change with every single patch. To start off with, every great Kindred player needs to know how to play around burst damage. Lamb's Respite is Kindred's signature ability and you need to consistently get the most out of it. Remember that it's always better to use your ult too early rather than too late. We all know the pain of holding our ult too long than having our teammates spam ping it after somebody important dies. To improve your burst anticipation, be sure to identify the key damage threats on the enemy team whenever you have idle time, leading up to team fights or skirmishes, or at the beginning of the game. It's much harder to react to burst threats than it is to proactively anticipate if you've already planned ahead. You can also creatively use your ult to prevent bursts not just on teammates or yourself, but also on neutral objectives. Because nothing can die in Lamb's Respite, you have the opportunity to force a 50-50 smite by queuing into the pit and laying down your R as it comes into smite range. If the enemy jungler misplays it and uses their smite in your ult, the objective will freeze at really low health and give you a great steal opportunity. The final part of playing around burst damage is to get the most value out of your E, Mounting Dread. The third proc of Mounting Dread critically strikes targets based on their missing health and works as an execute. A key time to use this burst damage is when you're coming out of Lamb's Respite. Ideally, you're able to stack your E and then get the third proc right as your ultimate expires for maximum burst. Stacking this with your Q will also help you dodge any crowd control at the last moment, preventing the enemy from locking you down as your ult expires. Next up, we have a few wall jumps for you to add to your bag of tricks. You probably know most of the basic jumps, but there are a few more that might come in handy in unique situations that are a little bit more difficult to execute. Starting on blue side, to jump from the red buff over to raptors, you line up with the crack beneath the claw marks and then hover your mouse over the large blade of grass next to the yellow flowers by raptors. To come back over the wall the same way, line up just to the right of the yellow flower on the ground, then hover where the grass meets the rock below red buff. From the left of red buff, you can jump over that large wall by hugging this tree right here and hovering the left corner of this stone right here. To jump the opposite way, you'll click on this crack in the wall and you'll hover your mouse over this specific spot on the tree by red buff. On red side, you can actually clear the fat part of the red buff wall by standing just to the left of this set of yellow flowers which lines up Kindred's head with the base of this branch, then hover your mouse over this little indent in the rock by red buff. To jump the opposite way, line up with the crack where the rock meets the tree in the red buff pit, and then hover your mouse over this blade of grass by raptors. To hop the wall towards Blastcomb, you can click on the wall to the right of these tombstones, then hover your mouse just over the bottom left of the top of this tree with the other tombstones. Going the opposite way, you'll line up with this yellow flower up against the wall, and then hover your mouse over the bottom of where these two trees overlap. And then finally, you can hop the large wall near the top inhibitor turret. You just find the spot on the wall where you sink into the tree, and then you can hop over by hovering the stone right here. To jump back, you sink into the wall and then hover your mouse over the helmet near the tombstone. And I highly recommend practicing all of these in the practice tool before you jump into a ranked game and try to pull them out. For the third tip, we'll get into tracking Kindred's marks on camps. Even more important than Kindred's ultimate is her passive. The snowball potential you have from collecting early marks makes you so much more likely to take over games. Tracking and securing these marks will help you reach those breakpoints much more reliably. The first thing to keep in mind is what camps actually can be marked at any given time. With zero marks, only Scuttle Crab can be marked. Between one and three, it's the Scuttle Crabs, Raptors, and Gromps that can be marked. From four to seven, it's Krugs, Wolves, and Buffs. And then eight or more means only epic monsters can be marked. After a marked camp is killed, Wolf will be able to mark the next camp in 45 seconds. If no camps in the appropriate tier are alive on the map, Wolf will mark the next viable camp as soon as it spawns. So getting respawn timers when invading on Kindred is very helpful for this tracking. 
If a marked camp is cleared by an enemy in Fog of War, the mark will disappear from the minimap 15 seconds after. So if you see a mark disappear from the minimap, that tells you two things. First of all, it gives you an idea of where the enemy jungler could be. They're within a 15 second walking proximity of that spot. Also, it tells you that the next camp will be marked in 30 seconds from when you see it disappear. Once you've tracked this and you know when the next camp is spawning, you can anticipate which camp is going to receive the mark and then you can be there as soon as it hits and it's actually really satisfying to do that properly. For the next tip, be sure to use your marks on champions and camps properly to apply pressure across the map. And there's a few different ways to do this. First of all, you can create artificial pressure by marking an enemy that you have no intention of ganking. The enemy may be setting up a dive on the opposite side of the map, but by marking them, you'll at least make them second guess themselves if they don't have any information on where you are. This creates a false pressure on the map and can be used either as a deterrent for enemy aggression or intimidation towards vulnerable enemies that they might think that they're getting dove and then they play even safer or they leave the turret completely and they miss out on XP and gold. Either way, this can help you get in the head of your opponents and start playing mind games. Another way that you can generate pressure through marks is to make cross map plays when you see a camp marked which is unrealistic for you to go for. Typically, your opponent will try to clear your marks as soon as possible, and they just want to take away your opportunities to collect the marks. With this knowledge, you can make plays on the opposite side of the map, using that 50 second rule from tip number 4 as confirmation of when they steal those marks, which gives you the green light to make a play on the opposite side. Then my final tip is to tighten up your jungle kiting and improve your clear. If your jungle clear is lacking, you'll constantly show up to skirmishes later than the enemy and with less HP, and that's just not a good spot to be in. Wolf's Frenzy is definitely your most important ability when it comes to clearing efficiently. When placing it, be sure to position it so that you can pull the camp to the edge of its patience range. Ensure that you can get several cues out of it without being forced out. If your W is centered around the camp, you'll spend more time in its auto attack range and be forced to either take more auto attacks or you'll have to leave Wolf's Frenzy early and not get all of your Qs. Your W will also help with kiting as Wolf's attack on monsters slow it by 50% for 2 seconds, which means that's a few more auto attacks that it's not getting while it's slowed. When using Mounting Dread on camps, try to save it for when the camp is below half health. If you lead with E, then you aren't going to get the full execute damage from the third stack. This is really important in the early game as an extra 100 damage even can save you two auto attacks and that's a lot of time. And that's going to bring us to the end of this 5 tips video for Kindred. If you have any other tips to share, be sure to drop them in the comments below and check out our other 5 tips videos if you enjoyed this one. To stay up to date on the latest runes, builds, and matchups for Kindreds, head on over to mobilitics.gg and dive on in. I've been your host, Coach Kairos, and I'll see you next time.